Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's see solution of model question paper 2 for the subject DDCO. The first question demonstrate the working of NAND and XR gate. So very simple question. Here we need to explain NAND gate working and XR gate working by using the gate structure as well as the expression and truth table. Remember, you need to write the gate structure as well as the expression and truth table. You need to explain the truth table like the output of the NAND gate is going to be 1 when these are the set of inputs. This is not of AND gate. Similarly, XR gate you need to explain it as it is exclusively R. That's why only when out of 2, one of the input is true, then only the output is true. And you need to write the expression clearly. Then explain the working of test bench in Verilog. First write 2-3 lines about test bench. Test bench is used to give the stimulus or input to the design. We can simulate the design using this test bench code. Then we need to give an example of the design, Verilog design first. Half adder functionality I have used here as example. I have written this code using data flow description. You can write in any description. So test bench will be same for any description design. So in the test bench you need to explain it is a module consisting of module name and input in the design becomes register in the test bench outputs will become wire in the test bench and we are instantiating our design code here by using the design name half adder and we are connecting these register wires to the input and outputs then we are assigning the different values with respect to delays are concerned so this we need to explain with respect to the working of test bench and this test bench is going to uh, take values at 0 simulation time as a is equal to 0, b is equal to 0. After 100 time units, this is the value. After 200 time units, this is the value. After 300 time units, this is the value. So finally, it is going to finish after this execution of this statement. This much you need to explain for this code. Simplify the following Boolean function into SOP that is sum of product form and product of sum form. So they have given two expressions. Here I have taken the first expression AB, F of ABCD is equal to summation 0, 6, 8, 13, 14 first. And this is how we can uh, solve for a SOP to get the SOP. We need to put 1 over in the K map wherever the numbers are given. And we need to group together. So this is the expression I got. Similarly for POS, for the same set of values we need to group zeros and we need to write it as product of sum. So this is the POS I got. If there is any mistake while solving, uh, please let me know. I will try to correct it in the other video. So detailed explanation of this, uh, how to solve the SOP and POS will be given in the other video. Please refer to that if you have any doubt over here. Similarly for the second expression, 2, 4, 10, uh, you can see here SOP expression is this and POS expression is this. These two examples I will solve in the other video. Please refer to that if you have any doubt. And if there is any mistake, please comment below with the timing of this video where actually I have made a mistake. So let us correct this in the next video. Write a program in Verilog to de demonstrate the working of user defined primitive table. Here UDP is the concept they are expecting. In HDL, Verilog HDL, UDP can be used. UDP means user defined primitive table. It means the truth table can be used directly as you can see here. By using primitive keyword, we can define the primitive, user defined primitive with the variables A, B, C, D. Outputs and inputs we need to declare as we write in the Verilog design. And then by using table, we need to write the truth table as it is. You can see A, B, C are the inputs. Under A, we need to give A values, B values and C values and colon D. So this D refers to the output and then end table, end primitive. So this becomes the user defined primitive. Now we are defining D should be this with these set of inputs. Directly the truth table we are going to put it here. That's why it is a keyword under table we need to put. Then we can use this UDP in the module while designing. You can see here module circuit with this UDP, UDP underscore zero to something is the name used over here. That's why we need to instantiate that. And we can use the other variables here, E, F, A, B, C, D, something like that. 
we need to map those accordingly so dabc corresponds to eabc in this uh, design and then we used one more and gate to get the functionality of the this expression so for this expression they have written the udp so let us discuss this also in detail in other video about udp for very long i will uh, take it in the other video for more discussion so this is the explanation and the code required for this realize f is equal to ab plus cd using nand gates only they have given ab plus cd as expression nand gate requires a whole bar to implement it means one nand gate gives output as a into b whole bar so first take double bar try to simplify single one bar first keeping the other bar as it is apply de morgan's theorem it gives a b bar into c d bar whole bar now we can implement a into b whole bar using nand gate like this similarly c into d whole bar like this and complete bar will be the output of nand gate again take a into b as one input c into d as other input put one nand gate it gives the expression this is how we can implement using nand gates simplify the following boolean expression using k map again two expressions are given this is for eight marks so 4 4 is the split up and here i have solved this using uh, these many groups again solve this by your own if i made any mistake here please comment below let me know uh, i will try to correct it okay explain data flow modeling in verilog with an example program so explain the data flow modeling it is a style of writing code in verilog it uses continuous assignment statements continuous assignment statement in the sense using assign keyword we are going to write the expression as it is uh, we are going to use that expression of the design what we are going to do and we use operators in between this much you need to write and usually data flow description we are going to use while designing the combinational circuits not sequential circuits this much you need to write as explanation and write any example program that's why read a, a code verilog code uh, which um, can be an example for all the uh, questions something like this something like half adder in all three design styles or full adder in all three design styles and one flip flop so like this if you know you can write that code wherever it is required design full adder and uh, full subtractor circuit so this is the easy question you can write full adder truth table and the implementation of that similarly full subtractor here i have given how to subtract and how the borrow uh, and difference can be taken so you can refer this and i have made a separate video in the playlist you can see this design an octal to binary encoder here octal to binary encoder in the sense it consists of eight inputs and the output will be three why because octal in the sense eight there are eight set of inputs binary in the sense to represent the octal in binary require three outputs that's why it is called as octal to binary you can see here input will be taken as uh, i0 to i7 there are eight set of inputs uh, that's why octal and the input values we are supposed to give in such a way that only one of the input will be one and other inputs are zeros likewise if we see when i0 is equal to 1 the output will be 0 0 0 this is how it will encode so you can see similarly when i7 is equal to 1 1 1 1 so by using this truth table i have generated uh, the expression and then implemented using or gates you can implement like this these are the expressions for b2 b1 and b0 explain the working of four bit adders using four full adders this is very important question repeatedly asked even in the previous question paper we have seen ripple carry adder is very very important so four bit ripple carry adder they have asked but they have not given it as ripple carry adder just they given it as four bit adder using four full adders design a bcd to xs3 code converter so bcd to xs3 in the sense we need to take the bcd input and we need to add 3 to that that becomes xs3 binary to xs3 also we take the binary number and add 3 that code becomes xs3 we will get the expression like this and implement it using basic gates so demonstrate the working of sr latch and its triggered d flip flop sr latch 
the circuit here i have given using nor gate you can also write using nand gate and the truth table if you see for 00 sr the output will be latch it means hold state it will hold the previous state as it is coming to h trigger d flip flop you can see here a, there is a positive edge detector circuit before the flip flop circuit you need to write this and by taking the positive edge as triggered uh, clock how the output is going to be changed you can see d is going to be changed over here itself but it will wait for the positive edge to change the output similarly zero will be detected at the positive edge of the clock and it goes zero this is how we can explain the edge triggered concept of flip flop then describe the big endian and little endian address assignment how the big endian and little endian concept work in writing the data into addresses you can see here msb this is msb this is lsb if you follow the little little endian method lsb is lsb data is at the least address means lowest address will be having lsb highest address will be having the msb so this is how the little endian works in the big endian method the msb data will be at the lower address means at the zero address zero address msb will be filled highest address lsb will be filled this you need to write the diagram and you need to explain here also you can see if little endian is the method the value of this will be this much you need to write it uh, you need to read it from the top why because this is msb 04 01 comes later if it is big endian we need to read from the bottom bottom becomes msb 0120 304 so the complete data and the reading goes reverse so you need to explain this clearly you can also go with this uh, diagram which is given in the prescribed test book demonstrate the instruction execution and sequencing for c uh, is equal to a plus b with a block diagram so here the block diagram is not given you write the block diagram and here the clear procedure Uh, for for the execution of that instructions for c is equal to a plus b is shown there are uh, three different ways we can do that so that is clearly given you can read this um, and explain this is since it is for eight marks you need to write the diagram that carries three to four marks and different methods to do that using different set of instructions three address instruction two address instruction or one address instruction carries four marks with block diagram explain the basic functional units of a computer this is the block diagram for the basic functional unit of a computer any functional units of a computer consisting of a memory ios alu and control unit so you need to explain each and every block what is the functionality of those with relevant example explain the following modes of addressing these are addressing modes direct addressing mode register addressing mode indirect addressing index addressing mode base with index and offset addressing mode auto increment addressing mode here the example is also given and the syntax is also given you can refer this and you can write your examples by your own also a program with 7000 machine instructions need an average of three basic steps to execute one instruction find the performance of a computer having a clock speed of 700 kilohertz the expression for measuring the performance of a computer is t is equal to n into s by r here t is the performance parameter we need to calculate n is number of machine instructions number of machine instructions is n and s is the basic steps required three basic steps required here to execute and r is the rate of the clock speed and if you put together calculate it becomes 0.03 what are condition code flags mention the significance of flags n z v c so these are flags present in the processor to indicate the condition of the program execution n means negative it will be set to 1 when the result of the alu is negative if it is 0 the result of the alu is not negative similarly when the result of the alu is 0 the z flag will be 1 overflow will be when when the overflow of that register occurs v becomes 1 when the carry is generated from the result c becomes 1 so this is how we need to explain when it becomes 1 and when it becomes 0 
Describe DMA with its registers and controller controllers. Here I have given the registers in DMA interface, and you can see IRQ, IE, done, read, write bar. You can see here the simple explanation I have given. You can add some explanation more for this, explaining the registers in detail, and also how the uh, DMA works with clear cut explanation since it is for 10 marks. To get 10 marks for these theory questions, you need to underline and also write in points. At least one page of answer is expected. You need to underline clearly the points which is uh, very much important for the question. Explain the effect of size, cost and speed in memory hierarchy. So this is the memory hierarchy with respect to size, cost and speed. Registers, primary cache, secondary cache, main memory magnetic disk and secondary memories. These are the different types of memories. So as we go upwards, uh, come to registers from disk, the speed increases and also cost per bit also increases. The size is going to be increased in the reverse way. Registers and primary cache will be having less size. As you know, main memory and magnetic disk secondary memory will be having the higher in size. Explain hardware interrupt enabling disabling of interrupts and sequence of events in handling the interrupt request from a single device. Here is the diagram or uh, the circuit for open drive bus used to implement a common interrupt request line. And here is the steps required uh, for a handling the interrupt request from a single device. Refer this sequence of events in handling the interrupt request from a single device. So enabling disabling of interrupts and hardware interrupt you can go through this there are three options uh, they have given interrupt enable interrupt disable all that explained over here. Describe the different memory mapping functions for 10 marks. So here the different uh, mappings they have given here I have put it only the block diagram you need to explain this. You can see here this is direct mapped cache, this is associative mapped cache and this is self associative mapped cache. So you need to explain how the uh, mapping uh, will be here with clear cut explanation. This is for 10 marks. Describe how an ALU performs an arithmetic and logical operations along with input gating diagram. You can see here input and output gating for the registers is given over here. And this gives single bus organization of data path inside a processor. You can see how here how ALU is going to get and give the data from different registers. And this is input and output gating for one such register is shown. Explain four stage pipeline with diagrams. So this uh, is the instruction execution divided into four steps. Here the four stage pipeline is given. You need to explain these two clearly uh, for 10 marks. Explain the complete set of operations involved in executing and as executing the instruction add R3, R1 along with control sequence. So the control sequence is uh, given here with the different set of registers and fetch the instruction, fetch the first operand. It contains the memory location pointed by R3 since they have used within the braces R3. Perform addition since it is add and load the result to R1. This is how the function of add of R3, R1 goes. And also you need to explain the control sequence for this. What are hazards? Explain data hazard, control hazard and structural hazard. So you need to explain the three types of hazards here, data hazard, control hazard and how the structural hazard is. I took uh, the explanation from the prescribed book again uh, try to put it here as much as possible try to understand this and explain or make a note of this in, in your own way and this since this is for 10 marks again you need to mention the answer clearly so this is about the model question paper 2 of ddcvo if there is any mistake please comment below let us try to correct ourselves with correct answer thank you